Welcome to Hope at Night. Featuring Lori Nichols. Jason Dietz. Q&A with our live audience. And host, Emil Kanda. Today's episode, Why is Community Important? And here's your host, Anil Kanda. Welcome back to Hope at Night. Some of you may know by now, I'm from Central California, home of the largest trees in the world. Did you know some of the redwoods are over 300 feet high and several thousand years old? You would think that trees so large would have roots reaching hundreds of feet down, but they actually have a very shallow system of roots that all intertwine. When storms blow, they truly have a support network that keeps them standing tall. In today's world, we all need the support we can get. Tonight, we'll hear the story of someone finding a faith community when they needed it the most, and it changed her life dramatically. Let's welcome to Hope at Night, Lori Nichols. Lori, I'm happy you're here. Thank you, it's good to be here. Now I heard recently you lost your mother. How are you managing with all of that? Um, it's been a difficult couple of weeks, of course, as anyone would imagine. Um, but honestly, with my, I'm gonna jump right in and say with my church family, they've been amazing. I've had, I have an amazing support system in my church and at home. Now you recently started to go to church. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I've only been a member of our church for going on two years. Um, and I, I really, the whole process of how we started coming to the church and um, what's happened over the course of the last two years has really, um, just I feel like God very much put me where I needed to be f to set me up for what was going to happen with my mom. It's an amazing thing to be part of a wonderful church mm -hmm. community, isn't it? It's right. so important. Who invited you? <laughs> um, I was invited to church. I'm a teacher and I was invited to church by a 14 year old student of mine. So you came across a 14 year old evangelist, yeah, right? Could yes. you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, um, Rachel is from Puerto Rico and I teach in West Virginia and she came, um, English is her second language and her parents approached me and asked me if I could tutor her so that I could help her out with the language and her studies. And we spent four or five days after school together and one day she said to me, where do you go to church? We had had common, we had some conversations about God, so we knew that we were both believers. And she asked me where I went to church and I said, we don't really have a church right now, but we need to find one. And she said, well, you can come to mine. So she, it just in conversation, in conversation, she invited you to church. Uh, how did you feel that one of your own students was inviting you to church? Well, it was really cool because we needed to find a church. Okay. And um, I feel more like the church found us through Rachel. Wow. And um, she, she told me she was gonna be singing that week. And I had her film a little video for my husband to tell us why we should come to her church. And she told us that it was a very much of a Bible believing, Bible teaching church. And if you have a question, we're gonna open up the Bible and tell you um, where the answer is in the Bible, not just from the top of our head kind of thing. And she made, she sold it. She sold us on it and we went and um, I'll tell you an interesting little story, a little bit of a little bit of a history, or a little bit of a backstory to that too, is that um, a few days before Rachel invited us to church, my husband had come home from work and was we were chatting and he was joking, jokingly he said to me, um, "If you could sit down with God and ask Him one question, what would you ask Him?" And I, I don't even remember what I said, Anil, I, I don't know. But he said, I would ask him what came first, the chicken or the egg, <laughs> right? So it was kind of a ha ha ha. Right. And it was a tongue in cheek question. He wasn't looking for a serious answer at the time. So um, Rachel asked me to church the next day, or within the next day or two, and on Saturday morning we pulled into the church and on the marquee it said, what came first? Really? Yeah. So your husband and you were discussing this, what question would you ask? Mm -hmm. Uh, if you were to, to come before God, and it had to do with what came first, the chicken or the egg, you show up to church, mm -hmm. 
and it was on the 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 billboard itself yep. what came first so yes. confirmation yes, God we were was in the right there. Place. absolutely and um when we went in, the sermon, the slide, first slide said, what came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> and that's exactly what his sermon was about. Was there a big smile at your face? Yeah, on your my, face at that I moment? wasn't looking at, I wasn't looking up at the time and my husband kind of stopped and he grabbed my arm and he said, look, and just, we both got goosebumps or angel bumps and we just knew. This is where God knew wanted this to be. is where God wanted us to be. Wow. What was your first experience like going to church, to a brand new church, being part of a brand new community? What was that like? We have never felt more welcome than we did at that church when we walked in the door. Yeah. When we, when the sermon ended or when the service ended, people were waiting to embrace us, to welcome us, to introduce themselves to us. Um, it, we just felt like we were very, very welcome right from step one, from day one. Had you gone to church before, another church yeah, before? we what had. Was, what we had kind of, experience was like? We had, we had gone to uh, a few different churches, um, like throughout the years. We've been married for 32 years, and we had gone to, you know, a church here and a church there, but we never really um, became really part of the church family. And this experience has been so different because we are part of a family. Mm. What does this teach you about community? the importance of community. You know, I've heard it said that there are three things um, in no particular order that if you find at least two of these three things, you'll stick around in your church. And the first one is um, the truth. If you find a church that teaches the biblical truth, that's important and that'll keep you there. The second one is um, having a mission within the church and having a role within the church. Mm. And the third one is a sense of community or connections within the church. And I just can't speak enough for that. You know, um, we know we have found a church that teaches the biblical truth. Um, we have made amazing friends when we, well, actually backing up the first time we went to church, we were also invited to do Bible studies with our pastor and his wife. And so we accepted that opportunity immediately. We were very interested. We, were, we came in very, very hungry. God had just laid the floor, you know, laid the, um, the framework for us to be there that day. And we were asked if we were interested in doing Bible studies and we jumped on that opportunity. So we started attending church in September of 2021. We did Bible studies. We were baptized in April of 2022 and entered the church through baptism. And then we became part of a mentoring. Um, we have a mentoring program in our church. And um, we became very good friends with the people who mentored us, right. which helped us develop more connections. In which ways has the community that's in your church supported you during the, the, the crisis that you just went through, you're still going through, I'm sure, but mm -hmm. how have they been a support for you? I feel like I, I don't know if I could have done it without them. Um, my mom was diagnosed with leukemia and I am a school teacher, so I was off for the summer. So I was there when she was diagnosed and I was there part of the summer with her. She had a bone marrow transplant and I, so I'm in Florida. I don't have any family there except my mother and um, and her, my, her husband, my stepfather. and. And I don't have a, I have a church that I attend while I'm there, but they're not my church family. They were right. wonderful and I, they were wonderful, but it's not my church family. And um, my friend here, the one who was my mentor when we joined the church, um, she, she kept saying to me on the phone, you need to get your mom to Maryland. You need to, once we knew there was nothing more that could be done for her at the hospital in Florida, my friend kept saying, you need to get her here so we can support you. You are there by yourself get her to Maryland so we can support you, we can help you. And I approached the topic with my mom. My mom told her husband that she wanted to come to Maryland to be with family, because my, my sons are in Maryland and my brother is in Pennsylvania, only two hours away. And she didn't have any you know, family down there either, other than her, and I wanna, I wanna make sure that it's known. They hadn't been married very long. Gotcha. So it's not, you know, and I, to say that he wasn't her family, I don't mean it that way, but they hadn't been married very long. And here she had you know, her children in, in this area and grandchildren in this area, and she wanted to be with So she them. was open to coming she out to this area? She was very open, okay. yes. So once we knew from the hospital that yes, we can do this, we can, get, we can help you get her to Maryland, we, we can arrange for oxygen and we can arrange for the products that she needed in her body to help her get here and have the energy to make the transition, um, we did it. And, and we, my brother flew down and 
by the grace of God, the next day we took another flight back to Maryland um, and got her to my house. And um, when we arrived at my house, my very good friend Tracy, who kept saying you need to get her here so that we can support you, was waiting for us. Wow. She's actually a hospice aide. Okay. Um, and so that was beautiful too. She right. came, she brought her daughter and her granddaughter. Her granddaughter, just learning to walk, was happy to show my mom her new steps. And it was just kind of this really neat um, transition and welcoming for my mother. And hospice had already been there and set everything up with the assistance of my church friends. And they came within a couple of days and bathed her right. and just took such wonderful, gentle care of her. It seems like God sent the right people at oh the right goodness. time during Absolutely. This, this moment. Absolutely. Wow. So when you you think about this, you look back on what, what's happened recently, how important and critical is community to every person? It's so important to be part of a community because you have people who have um, something in common with you. Um, in this case, in the church community, we have this, um, uh, I, I like, I guess, I don't know if the right word for it is spiritual discernment, but you know, my friend, my friend can call me and she can say, you are never gonna believe what Jesus did for me today. And I, I'm not gonna say, oh geez, you know, right, and right. roll my eyes at her. I'm gonna say, tell me, what did Jesus do for you? Or I have another friend who called me recently and she said, um, you're never gonna believe what Satan tried to do to me today and what God saved me from today. You know, so you have that, that common system of beliefs right. that you can, um, you share and so it allows for great conversation. Yeah, you got this people network where you guys can connect and talk about things, I'm sure pray with each other. Absolutely. There's there's spiritual uh, bonds that take place there yes. with that. Huh? Yes. How else has community impacted you and been a blessing to you? My husband in the past had um, struggled with some alcoholism and at the mark of his two year anniversary of sobriety, we had a party for him and that was attended by our church friends, the friends that we've made at church and the community that we've made at church. And so now he has this sense of obligation and um, uh, accountability. It, it gives you some accountability as well. Right. When right. you have that connection with people, you know, he doesn't want to let them down. That's really fascinating because it, it seems that when you're part of a community, uh, you're, you're constantly pressing towards growth, especially if there's like interest. and. You know, it's part mm -hmm. of being part of being part of the the spiritual community that the Bible talks about. It, it's it's not just a, a a time of or a group of connection that happens. It's also a, a place of growth, mm -hmm. right? And like you're talking about accountability and yeah. and just uh, yeah, helping others succeed in this very process, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. I remember reading this book when I was doing my uh, public health degree, and the class had to do with health behaviors. Okay. And they wanted to understand what brings about success in helping people change their health behaviors and what brings about failure. And uh, at the very end of the book, they summed up the entire research by saying, the one thing we have found out is that if you are not achieving your goals, it's because you're not part of a people group who share your goal as a value. I believe that. Right? Mm -hmm. And if heaven... Jesus mm -hmm. is, is the value, right? Yeah. It's the goal, right? Yeah. And we want to be around those that also believe that as well. Absolutely. Lori, I really appreciate this discussion. I'm, I'm really blessed by just, just to see how important community is mm -hmm. and why it's so crucial for every person like never before. Yeah. It's been great to hear from Lori. For our next segment, we'll hear from a pastor and former special operations team leader in the U.S. Army who learned the importance of someone having your back. So don't go away. It's all about connection here on Hope at Night. Earlier, we met Lori Nichols, a public school teacher who found a faith community right when she needed it the most. Right now, we're going to meet a pastor who served in the armed forces as a special operations team leader and has learned from both roles the importance of a support network. Join me in giving our guest a warm welcome, Jason Dietz. So Jason, we're glad you're here. It's good to be here. 
Now, you served in the armed forces. Now, which one are you? I'm the tough guy right down there in the center on the bottom uh, on the bottom row. Now, when you said tough guy, I said there, I thought to myself, they all look like tough guys right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me more about what you did and how long you were there for. Yeah, so I served as a team leader in um, special operations with Third Ranger Battalion. Uh, part of my job there was conducting, uh, you know, combat operations uh, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom. Now, I'm sure your life was on the line many times, but was there any particular incident that took place where you almost lost your life? Yes. To save your save your teammates. Right. Yeah. So one of the most traumatic or one of the most memorable uh, times was on my third deployment. I was um, I was deployed at, in Iraq, and part of that deployment we were supporting a sniper element. My job was to take my team and watch over the sniper element. Why the sniper element watched over the people on the ground. Now, as the sniper element was getting into place on top of a roof, they went on top and there was a bunch of uh, guys that decided to come out of the building and the sniper element was kind of wrestling them to get them detained and uh, recognizing that they needed help, there was a sense of urgency. And as they were on top of the roof, I wanted to help them out and is tried as much as I could uh, to get on uh, to their position. As I pulled myself on top of the roof, uh, unfortunately, uh, I pulled the entire ledge with me and ended up falling two stories down to the ground. And Neil, it was, I, I kid you not, the, the fall was so long that I was in the air, like contemplating life decisions. Like this is gonna, <laughs> this is gonna hurt and this is not gonna feel good. You had time to think. I had time to think. Everything slowed down and I'm falling and I said a few choice words, this is, this is not gonna be a good day. And it wasn't. As I fell to the ground, I ended up uh, bro uh, breaking both of my ankles and um, that wasn't the scariest part though. As, uh, as, I, as I hit the ground, um, all of those cinder blocks and there was an AC unit, they all had to go somewhere and it ended up going right down by me. And I'm looking up at all of these, all of these cinder blocks and this giant AC unit, and I thought for sure, like, this was the end. You know, like, death by AC unit. And- That's not the way you wanna go, right? <laughs> it, is, it is definitely not the way I wanted to go. So you fell down, landed on your back, your body's broken and everything is coming down and it looks like it's about to fall right on top of you. What happens yeah. next? Yeah, so at that point, I believe that my guardian angel was right there throwing the bricks and the AC unit and all of that stuff out of the way because it is truly a miracle how none of that ended up uh, falling on me. But after, um, after, after that, um, it was just a long, a long road to recovery. I ended up going back. Um, they sent me over to Germany for my first surgery, and then I went back to uh, Georgia for the next two surgeries to kind of repair me and to to fix my uh, my broken uh, my brokenness, if you will. So there was a long journey of recovery here. Yeah. What was going through your mind at that moment or those moments? Yeah. So it was it was a dark time for me because. Remember, I had gone on three previous deployments, and so I'm 21 years old, invincible, already d deployed, been shot at before, and you get this kind of sense of invincibility. Well, that night just completely shattered that false perception, and my mortality became very, very real. And I started questioning a lot of things in my own belief system, my own value system. What is my purpose here on earth? Why am I here? What is really important? What matters most? And that was the moment that really caused me to look at life and say, what is most important? How did this lead you down a, a spiritual path? Yeah, so all of, that, all of that questioning led me to God. And as I was 
kind of in the midst of being medically retired um, because of my injuries, I had, a, I had a prayer that I said to God, and maybe you've prayed it before, maybe other people have. You know, Lord, if you just get me out, you know, I will do anything for you, you know? And uh, we, uh, I, had, I said that prayer, and the Lord wasn't kidding. Like, he's like, I'm gonna hold you to that. And I got out of, I got out of the army, and I was still questioning, uh, you know, all of those things. But my sister was studying uh, the Bible and preparing for baptism. And when I got out, I decided I was gonna go visit my parents. As we visited, I learned that my sister was studying the Bible. She introduced me to the person who's studying the Bible. And I kid you not, it was so real. It was so profound, like God showed up through that study that my entire life was turned upside down. Wow. So much so that like two weeks later, I go from basically just getting out of special operations, living a life that is so far from God, and then being baptized and then joining the church in like two weeks. <laughs> in two weeks? In two weeks. God is, uh, has an amazing way of getting attention and to changing the course of people. What was life like when you first started to go to church? How was that experience? So remember, I come from uh, an, an environment where everybody's kind of, you know, it, intertwined in this, in this sense of team. You know, we're there for each other, we support each other. We're not perfect in any means, right. uh, by, by any means, but we are there for each other. I can trust the person next to me that they have my back and they can trust me that I have their back. And in that, um, in that first time at church, it was that same sense of we're here for you. That same sense that we, are, we care about you. Now, I went to a, uh, a church when I first started going, and they all wore suits, and they all looked really great. And I showed up in t-shirts and, and shorts. And immediately, I was still welcomed and they still cared about me. It wasn't about the way I dressed, it wasn't about the way I talked or the way I acted or anything else. They were genuinely interested in me as a person. And that is something that I carry with me even to this day, just that warm embrace of community, that warm embrace of like, we're here for you. And almost an extension of the army except with uh, you know, a little less swearing and a little less <laughs> craziness and a little more uh, godliness. Hopefully a lot less swearing. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so here you are, you're going to church and, and you carry with you obviously your military experience, your background. Have you noticed any lessons from your time in the military that you feel that the church really could use? Yeah, so it's that, that sense of being there for each other. And I think that is absolutely vital. Everybody's going through something. And in the, in the army, like, you couldn't have a bad day. Because if you have a bad day, you know, and you, you, you don't do your job, people can get hurt. Right. And so you need to be kind of, you need to be on top of your game. You need to be, you know, 100% all the time. The church is similar, except we're broken people, right? And we're gonna have bad days. And unlike the army, it's okay to have a bad day, right? But that same sense of community, that same sense of camaraderie, that same coming together is absolutely vital for, for, the, for the church. And so I would say from the army to the church, that sense of you know, brother, brother and sisterhood, that sense of being there for each other is just, is just key. So you were in the military, now you serve as a church pastor, is that right? That's right. How, how in the world did you end up becoming a pastor of all things? The, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, when God gets a hold of you, it's, it's really hard not to want to share that love with other people. And so I knew, I mean, you're talking about somebody who wanted, had nothing to do with God, never grew up in the church, not really religious in the least, and all of a sudden just coming into this, this church and coming to know this God who loves me 
loves us more than anything. And how could I not want to share that with other people? And I didn't know what capacity the Lord was going to uh, convict me or, or lead me in. But, you know, as you follow God, I mean, amazing things happen. He takes you all over the right. place, and you know the journey is never uh, is never dull. In fact, is as exciting as special operations was and doing all the the cool things of you know jumping out of airplanes that are perfectly good and you know parachuting down uh, and doing all of that, that those cool things that you see in the movies. It doesn't compare to the journey that God places you on. Mm -hmm. The places that he takes you, the places that he's taken me and the direction and the part of the journey uh, led to pastoral ministry. And that's kind of, uh, you know, that's kind of how it happened. Another kind of adventure for your life, right? That's right, that's With right. With a greater joy. Yes, right. for sure, for sure. So as a pastor, as a um, community leader, what does community actually mean? What does that mean to you? Yeah, community is a group of people from diverse backgrounds, from various social economic standings, all coming together and being there for each other. And I think that that's something that the church has that not a lot of places uh, in this world um, can, can, can have. And that true sense of really being there for each other and loving each other. Jason, what if someone says to you, they say, hey, look, I, I appreciate what you're saying. I think it's great. Thanks yeah. for sharing your story. But do I really need a church community? Is, is, does that really need to be part of my spirituality? Does that need to be part of my life? Can I just worship God alone? What would you say? I, I would say you can, of course, worship God alone. That is something that if you want to do that, you go, you go ahead and do that. But I would say, in my experience, uh, the church community is absolutely vital. If you want to continue to grow in Christ, if you want to continue to mature uh, in, in faith, that community is vital. Paul says it in Philippians uh, chapter 3. He says, follow my example, basically, as I follow Christ. And you're like, uh, it's kind of, you know, shouldn't we only look to Jesus? Shouldn't we only focus on him? But the reality is there's people all around us in church community that we can look to and say, man, you know, they may not be perfect, but they're following Christ. They're all in. They're leaning in on Christ. And we can be like them as they follow Christ. Like, I'm sure there's, there's people from all, you know, all over, and we can say, hey, they're leaning into Christ, and I can be like them as they follow Christ. And you get that in community. For example, I, I'm not really good at like conceptual ideas, right, of, hey, this is what you should do. I need to see it. I need to see it, or I really can't do it. And the way I see Christianity the way I see following Jesus is with other believers. And that only happens in community. When I first came into the church, I had no idea how to pray. I had no idea, you know, what, how to talk to God. But as soon as I got out of, uh, got out of the army, they had a uh, week of prayer at the church I was attending. And all these young people and you know, all these men and women of God just pouring their hearts out to, to Christ. And I'm watching this and I'm observing this and I'm like, that's, that's how you pray. Mm -hmm. That's how you talk to God. There's a learning element that takes place in the community, right? A, a, a maturation process, a, a growth that happens when you're a community that doesn't necessarily always happen when you're alone. That's right. How, how, how can you learn to pray if you don't see it modeled? You know, and church is a great way to see how to model your faith. Now, like I said, we don't do it perfect all the time, but there are people that are leaning in and saying, you know, I'm all in for Jesus and, you know, follow me as I follow, follow Christ. And community is a big part of that. Jason, if, uh, uh, let me ask you this, which is, what do you think are some good principles for healthy community? Some good principles for healthy community is one, it has to be a safe environment. So in my church right now, 
that's one of the things that you know I constantly cast the vision for safe community. The church should be the safest place on earth, the safest place where you can come and not be judged, the safest place where you can come and, and take off your mask and, and, and say, hey, you know, how are you doing today? Well, I'm not good. And be safe to share the things that you're going through and to know that people are going to come alongside of you and walk with you through those things and do life together. And so it has to be a safe, it has to be a safe environment. And that's one of the things at uh, the church that I currently pastor is creating that environment, casting that, casting that vision and making sure that people understand that this is a safe place no matter what you're going through. Okay, so the first thing I'm hearing is this idea of having a safe community where people can be vulnerable without sort of a, any judgment upon them. Uh, there's a sort of a, a welcoming embracing of individuals as they are, not where they should be. Right. Right? Right. What else would you say is another good principle of healthy community? Yeah, so we are really focused on hospitality, like kind of this idea of a relentless welcome, where you come in and you feel like at home you feel like you are a part of the family. And I think that's key because the church family is just that, it's a family. And so often, I mean, some churches do that really well, others may not do that well, but when it's done well, you know that this is, this is a place that you want to be. And so this idea of just relentlessly welcome people, relentlessly welcoming people. Paul also says in Philippians that our citizenship is of in heaven and you want to give them a little bit of taste of heaven you want this to be kind of an oasis from the baggage that they carry throughout the week to where they can come in where anybody can come in and just <sighs> exhale and well, be like I'm home well, this is what Lori talked about was this idea of, of fellowship and friendship these tightly knit um, bonds that connect, that exist between people where someone's willing to go out of their way to help you, to look out for you, right? This idea of family. The difference between a house and a home is family, right? For sure. Right? Sometimes we want to build a house, but they need to build a home first, right? Mm, mm. So uh, that's the second thing. What else would you say is another good principle of building healthy community? You talked about a safe environment. You talk about this family, hospital hospitality, welcoming, embracing, bringing close uh, anyone who shows up. What else would you say is another principle? Yeah, so uh, a, another principle is, is service, serving, serving others. And that's uh, one thing that, you know, not only do we serve inside of the church, each other, uh, but we also serve outside of the church as well. And serving each other doesn't always look like your traditional service where, you know, I'm going to mow my church member's lawn or I'm going there. But service is, you know, just being, coming alongside of them in a difficult time. Service is, can be any number, uh, any number of things, you know, walking through them with a, uh, a challenging passage of, of scripture or, or, what, uh, or what have you. But service, I think, is also another key thing um, when it comes to community. Not so much focused on ourselves, but focused on others. And I do believe, you know, we gotta take care of ourselves. You know, there's, right. there's you don't wanna neglect yourself, but there's a, a blessing that you miss out on when you're just so inward focused and you miss the people who are right next to you. And so, yeah. so it's it's a principle of selfless service for others in whatever mm. form that is, right? Not just a few, two or three narrow options for outreach or service, but y y you're trying to emphasize and embed into those that are there that are listening, that are part of your congregation or community that service comes in multiple forms. Right. 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 For sure. For a sure. Any other principles you would add to that? Yeah, and it, you know, I think that as far as as far as community goes, there needs to be the relentless welcome. There needs to be that um, that that ability to make it feel like home, and you have to have those connections with uh, with each other. And I would just say, you know, apart from service and and the other things, that um, it just needs to be um, an environment. The, um, the, the place that, that 
you want to be. Right. And I think that that's uh, that's that's important. But yeah, you know, Jason, Lori brought up this idea of truth. Mm. Why it's also important, right? Uh, a better understanding of biblical realities. Right. Would you say that's important to communion? Yeah, for sure. So you need to find a church that uh, you know that you can align with as far as as far as the Bible goes. For example, if you're convicted. Uh, that Jesus died and rose rose from the grave, and that uh, he he paid the penalty for 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 your sins. Well, you need to find a church that also believes the same thing. You don't want to go to a church that you know doesn't believe that Jesus died, that he paid the penalty for our sins, and that he rose again, and that he's coming back uh, to to for for us to spend eternity with him. You don't. Truth is is important. Biblical truth is important, and finding a community that teaches that is vital as well. Right. Yeah, and, and I think everything you've described are all great principles for a healthy, thriving community. Wow, Jason, Lori, really appreciate this conversation. And I think as you guys are talking, I think this is really touching the hearts of people saying, and I would love to be part of a community like that. And it's possible, right? Absolutely. For sure. Well, it's time to go to a break, but when we come back, we'll get to hear some questions from our live audience for our guests tonight, so don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to Hope at Night. We've been talking about the importance of finding a family of faith, a church community to love, and to be loved by and nurtured by. I'd like to turn to our live in-studio audience. First of all, did any of the material resonate with you? Uh, hi, uh, Jason's story definitely resonated with me as a fellow service member and veteran. So I'm a United States Marine Corps veteran. Um, and I was definitely one of the people whose faith was awakened uh, during military service, and I saw that trend. So I'm, I'm also in ministry as well. So your story resonated. So thanks so much for sharing it. Well, thank you for your service as well. And I think um, the military had a huge part uh, in my life. And I think even like being a Marine, even s much more that camaraderie and that, that brotherhood and that sisterhood that develops there. Um, it's just something that you never forget. And I was even saying, um, like even, I, I've been out of the army for like 15 years, right? But I could call back my people and it would be as though we just talked the other day, right? Like that sense of camaraderie and that, that sense of friendship goes beyond the number of years. It's always there. And I think likewise, you know, in the Marines, there's a next level of brotherhood and camaraderie and uh it's really really cool that uh you you've had a similar experience right. and uh got to enjoy uh that that sense right. of camaraderie in that in that uh, sphere once a marine always a marine that's always what i hear marine, right? <laughs> <laughs> well let's take some questions from our audience for our guest tonight do we have any questions right over there Hello, I was wondering, where do you find or begin to find um, a good church community? What would you guys say to that? I think um, you find a church that has the beliefs that are b biblical and aligned with yours, like um, Jason said earlier, and you just, you go and, and you, see, you, you see if you connect with those people. You know, you may not, you may not connect with people in the first church you attend but keep, don't quit because somewhere God's got a place for you. There is a place for you. That's beautiful. Jason, what would you say to that? You, you have to go out there and actually experience what church is like. And it may not be the first church you attend, it may not be the second church, but there's a church out there for you. And getting connected uh, is, is important. And part of getting connected is putting yourself out there mm -hmm. and experiencing uh, the, the different churches and seeing what works with your belief system and where you feel God is leading you in that. You know, when uh, I didn't grow up a, a, a Christian or a Bible believing, you know, individual, whatever, but when I began to study out the scriptures with someone and began to embrace some of the things of the Bible, I thought to myself, well, 
I want to find people who believe this. Mm -hmm. I want to find people who believe the same things I do, the truths that are in Scripture. But then going to the church, it was just as vitally important for me to find a community there that also embraced me, uh, that brought me in, and was very active. So those two were uh, are like wings of a bird that were really important for, for my spiritual growth and development, and still is. I think it's also important to know that you might not feel it the first time you attend. Don't go once and leave and figure, oh, I'm never going back there again. You know, I mean, of course there are circumstances where maybe you would, but I think it's also important to give people more than one chance to, you know, to get to know you a little bit too and to put yourself out there. Getting yourself engaged in a church is, is important. It's not all about church isn't a sit and get. You have to give to. You have to be able to put yourself out there too. Lori, that's an excellent point. Actually, give it a legitimate shot, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, excellent. Do we have any other questions? Right over there. I was just wondering what you might say to someone who is hesitant to join the church due to being judged or hypocrisy within members of the church. Right. Jason, you want to start with that one? Sure. The, the church is, is not perfect. The church is people and we're all broken. And if you find a perfect church on this side of heaven, you know, let me know mm -hmm. <laughs> because I would be really interested in attending that. But the fact is, even if there was a perfect church, the moment I walked in there, it would no longer be perfect. And I think that there are times when church is done poorly, where you do feel judged, where you do feel, you know, hurt or where people hurt you. But I always think the best of people. Like they're not there just to make me feel bad. Like they're not there to judge me. And yet it happens sometimes because we all have issues. We all have problems. And if you're expecting to go into a church and it's all gonna be sunshine and rainbows and everything is going to be perfect, that's just, that's just not the case. But I will tell you, there are some churches out there that do community really well and create that safe environment that we've, we've talked about before to where you don't feel judged and those sort of things. And finding that right community, finding that, that, that church that is going to be a safe place that does it well is vital. So if you never step out, you never experience the joys that God has for you in community. And so sometimes you just set aside those feelings of, man, maybe they're judging me, maybe they're making me, uh, and step out and see what God has in store for you. That's right. Churches are messy because people are messy, right? Yeah. Right, there's always gonna be issues in a church, right? But I really like what you're saying, which is go in there with the perspective of, I'm here to be a blessing. What's the overall reason why I'm there is to worship God and to understand that this is also a, a place for you to exercise the gifts that God's given to you mm -hmm. for other people. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> Fantastic. We got any other questions? Right over there. Um, what do you do if you've tried lots of different churches and none of them have really felt right? Like whether you don't agree with what they teach or they haven't been very welcoming? You just keep going. And, and that's, I mean, we have been to several churches throughout my lifetime. Actually, as a child, I remember being church hoppers. My, my mom never seemed to find the right church. And, um, but we didn't quit. You know, we didn't quit going. We kept looking. Um, you've got to find where God is. He's there and you have to find, you just, like you said, we are this imperfect community of people coming together. Um, but when you find that church where God is, it's, that, it's there, there's a church for you, just don't quit. And I think uh, what we had said earlier was really important, Lori, which is when you find the, the reason, the biblical reason for why you're going to church, mm -hmm. truth in God's word starts serving as a, as a kind of way marker, a sort of signpost saying, mm -hmm. this is the way, yeah. this is where I need you to be, this is why I want you to come here, you know. The, the scriptures and the, the truths of God's word serves um, as, as guidance for us, Absolutely. right? That's really important. I didn't grow up going to church, 
But when I begin to understand the why of worship and why that was necessary for my own faith and uh, growth and development, it, it led me down a particular journey in, in finding the place where I needed to be. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Sure. Any other questions for us? Right over there. Thank you. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who's looking for that church community, but they've just moved to a new state or a new area? Yeah. So finding finding a church that is an, is aligned with your biblical convictions is important. And sometimes that may there only may be one church in the area that is aligned with your biblical convictions. And so you have that. But I generally like to ask around. Uh, I, when, I, when I come to a new area, there's generally coworkers or people that I'm, I'm interacting with on a daily basis that I'm saying, hey, this is what I believe. Do you, do you know of any places in the area that would that would be interesting that that would be aligned with what I believe also Google is a really great resource you know to look up uh, the different uh, the different places uh, in your area social media <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we I'm sorry my neighborhood uh, has a Facebook page and there's a woman who's getting ready to move into our area and I've seen you know what school should we go to what you know, she's got all these questions. Where, where do you get your hair done? Just all these questions for people in the community, you know. And then she said, recently she said, okay, I saved the best question for last. Church, where do we find my church? Social media is a great resource. Right, I have friends when they come into a new area, they'll say, hey, is there any good churches around here for me to visit? Mm -hmm. uh, is, there, is there lunch afterwards? You know what I mean? So uh, they want to find out. And like you're saying, uh, people are willing to respond and, and mm -hmm. share their insights. When I was in Florida with my mom, I wanted to go to I wanted to attend church, but I didn't know where to go while I was down there. So I I went to a, a business owner and I said I'm looking for this denomination. It needs to be in a safe neighborhood and they need to speak English. And because um, I was in the Tampa area, so there was lots of options for languages. I said I need an English church in a safe area that's this denomination, and she led me to where I attended while I was in Tampa taking care of my mom. That's great, fantastic. I think we got time for one more question over there so we've been talking a lot about community and um, camaraderie but I was wondering if either of you believe that it's it weakens the Christian walk to walk alone um, or if someone can do that and still feel the fulfillment of what they need to get from the Lord I think you can I think you I think you can walk alone I don't know if it weakens you to walk alone but it definitely strengthens you to walk with others um, to have a core group of people that you can go out with to dinner and you know you're just gonna go have good clean fun and you're gonna laugh and you're not worried about who's drinking what or dirty jokes or you know th things that you might not agree with. Um, that is so strengthening. We go out often after the Sabbath ends, we go out for ice cream with the same people. You know, the, we, we kind of all meet at the same place um, after, after the Sabbath ends. And we just know we're gonna go and we're gonna laugh and we're gonna have fun. And when I was taking care of my mom, there was a day that was particularly difficult. And I called one of my church friends and I was crying. It was 8.30 at night and I was said, I don't know how I can do this. She was on hospice in my home, my mom was. And I, I don't know how I can do this. And in half an hour, three of my friends from church showed up and they were my support team. And so I think you can walk alone. You can have a good relationship with Christ alone, but it's so much stronger when you have other people to walk with. That's right. I would just agree with that. Like walking alone, you can do it, but walking together is how God intended it. Mm -hmm. Think about like the only perfect person who ever walked this earth was Jesus. If anybody could do it alone, it would have been Jesus, right? He didn't. And he didn't. Right. He chose 12 people and not like really great people either. Right. Like <laughs> some people who flawed have- Flawed people, some flawed people. Some flawed people and even one who betrays him. Yeah. And he chooses to do life together with them. Yeah. And I think that speaks volumes about the importance of community and the importance of doing life together. Sure, you can do it alone, but... Why would you want to? Why would you want to? <laughs> 
Right, right. And you see Jesus modeling community, mm -hmm. right? Jesus lived out community. He brought people into community. And that's what we need to be about, right? Mm -hmm. sure. God is a community builder. Absolutely. And we're called to do that too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you so much for the discussion. Tonight, we dove into the heart of the importance of connection to a community of like-minded believers. God wants us to plug into a family of believers for our support, our growth, and guidance. A safe place where we can love and be loved. Here at Hope at Night, we want to grow our community. If you need help plugging into a family of faith, or if you have stories to share of how a faith community has helped you, we want to hear it. Please follow us on Facebook at Hope at Night and send in your comments and questions to us there. Take care and may you always find hope at night. <laughs>